in the previous video, we worked example problems related to maximum and minimum values and functions, both local and global maximums and minimums. And the last problems we worked in that video were where we were given a function, specifically a closed interval within a function. The function was continuous over that interval, and we were asked to find the absolute maximum and minimum values in that interval. And these problems were related to the extreme value theorem, which states that if you have a closed interval and, a func and, and it, the function is continuous over that closed interval, there must be an absolute max and min. We followed these steps, the closed interval method. So it's a closed interval, continuous function. The first step was to find the critical numbers of the function over the open interval from A to B because the endpoints aren't going to be critical numbers. Critical numbers are related to the derivative. So for critical numbers, you're, you're taking the derivative and, and, it's, and evaluating the derivative within the interval, not the endpoints. So well, you find the critical numbers and then evaluate the function at those critical numbers. So you find the values of the function at the critical numbers. Then you find the value of the function at the endpoints of the interval. Then you just compare the values of the function at all of these points that you found in step one and step two. The largest is the absolute max. The smallest is the absolute min, right? So here's a function. It's, it's a closed interval, so it's defined at the endpoints, okay? So, so you find the value of the function at the endpoints. Note those values. Then you find the critical numbers within the function, within the, within the interval. So where does the derivative equal to zero? Where does the derivative not exist? Here, the derivative is equal to zero. It's equal to zero here. It doesn't exist here. It's a continuous function, though. So evaluate the function at those critical numbers. So you get the value of the function here, here, and here, and then just compare all of those values. And so you'll get, here's the, this is the lowest. That's the global minimum. Here's the largest. That's the global max. Okay, but what I want to talk about in this video is how do you analyze a function in general? So what if you use an open interval? And what if the function isn't continuous throughout the entire interval? How would you determine the global max and min? Okay, well, this isn't official math theorems I'm about to give. This is an engineering channel. I'm going to lay out how I would analyze this just based on my experience and understanding of calculus. Okay, here's two functions or, or, or intervals within functions that vary from the, the general closed interval method, the extreme value theorem method, right? So here it's a closed interval, but it's not continuous within the interval. Here it's not continuous within the interval, and it's also an open interval. Okay, so what I want to do is let's, let's analyze these functions, but using these steps, all right? So, you know, we don't have a continuous function necessarily, and it's not necessarily a closed interval. So let, let's ignore all this. We're just finding the absolute max and min values on a general interval on any function. So we would find the values at f at the critical numbers. And what do we know? What is a critical number? It's where the derivative is equal to zero or where the derivative doesn't exist. Okay, you can still have a critical number with a continuous function. That would be a point like this, right? Okay, now remember that we in chapter two, we know that if a function isn't continuous at a point, then it's not differentiable. The function has to be continuous in order to be differentiable. It's not saying that if a function is continuous, it's differentiable, right? Because that's what we saw here. But if a function is going to be differentiable, it has to be continuous, okay? And now also remember, what does differentiability mean? Well, one way to look at differentiability is if a function isn't differentiable at a point, then the derivative doesn't exist at that point. So what that tells us is that when we find the critical numbers within the interval, so we're not thinking about the endpoints right now. When we find the critical numbers within the interval, potentially some of those critical numbers are going to be points where the function is not continuous. It might be continuous like here, but it also might be a point like this or like this or like this. Okay, and it's these critical numbers where the function is has a discontinuity. That's the difference, right? That That's the difference between the general closed interval extreme value theorem method and something and something like this. So in other words, we're going to find the critical numbers, but if we have a critical number and it's not a discontinuity, then just do what we did before. Just find the value of the function at that point and list it off to the side. Find the value of the function here, 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 and, and list it off to the side. Find the value of the function like here, 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 and just list it off to the side. The value of the function, not the critical number, the value of the function at that critical number. Okay, but now we need a method for analyzing the function at, at a discontinuity. 
And yeah, we could do this visually. You know, I mean, that's just look, just look at the graph visually, graph the function you have, look at it visually to see what the absolute max and min are. But I'm, I just want to, I'm trying to think through this more, more from a math standpoint. I, I think it's a good exercise to think through this from, from a math standpoint. Okay, so how are we going to analyze the function at a discontinuity? Well, to give you kind of a hint of how we're going to do this, let's think about, let's come to the endpoints. So if, the end, if, if it's a closed interval, or if it's even a, you know, partially closed, like here, here it's open on the left, closed on the right, for any, any endpoint that's closed, just evaluate the function at that point and list it, right? So here we would just evaluate the function at A, list it on the side. Evaluate the function at S, listed on the side. Here, we would evaluate the function here, listed on the side. But what do we do if it's an open endpoint? All we're going to do is take the limit as X approaches that endpoint value from the left or the right, depending on if it's a left or right endpoint. So here, we would say, what is the limit as X approaches zero from the right of this G of X? And then list that on the side. And then, but also list, show that it's a limit value. It's not the function evaluated at that point. It's a limit value. Okay, so now let's come back to the, the, the discontinuities within the interval. From chapter two, he, here are the different kinds of discontinuities. You've got removable. This is a removable. This is a removable. You've got infinite discontinuities, and you've got jump discontinuities. And for any discontinuity... It, the, the function can still be defined at the discontinuity. It just depends on the, the function. Like here, you have an infinite discontinuity, but the function is, is defined to be one at the discontinuity. Or it could just be undefined. It just depends on whatever, the, it just depends on the specified function. Here, the, at this removable discontinuity, the function is undefined. Here, at this removable discontinuity, the function is defined, right? Here, at these jump discontinuities, the function is defined, but it could be undefined. So how do you analyze a discontinuity? Well, if the function is defined at the discontinuity, then put the value of the function at the discontinuity, right? Just list that, put that as part of the list, right? List this, list this, list these values. Then you want to find the limit as X approaches the discontinuity from the left, list that, and the limit as X approaches the discontinuity from the right, list that, right? So you would, here, you would put F of C is equal to this and put that off to the side, then find the limit as x approaches the function from the right, as, as x approaches, not the function, c from the right and from the left. Here, you would do the same thing. Put this value of the function, then also put the limit as x approaches b from the right and from the left. Same thing here. List this value of the function, and then the limit as x approaches 2 from the left and from the right. So now you look at that entire list, and, and, and you identify what is the largest value, what's the smallest value. You get that largest and smallest value and bring that off to, to another part, like uh, to the side again. But the difference is those aren't necessarily the absolute max and min. The only reason being because they aren't necessarily the absolute max and min from the standpoint that, so let's say instead of this, it was like this. Well, okay, so you brought off to the side this largest value, which would be the limit as X approaches C from the left and this value. But that's not the absolute max because the function is not defined here, right? There is no absolute max in this case. You can't specify a precise number. So you would put that there is no absolute max. The only way you have an actual absolute max or absolute min is if one of the, one of the two points that you, that you identified to be the absolute max or min, it's, the function is defined at that point. If it's a limit value, then the function is not going to be defined at that point unless... Like, like here, you would have brought off to the side, the value of the function at this point is this, and the limit as, the, as this approaches from the right, as C from the right is this, right? So, so you'd have the limit value, but also have the function defined at that point to be that same value. So you would know, okay, if, if this happened to be the largest or smallest value, then that would be a absolute max or min. But if all you had was the limit, and but the function, no function defined at that point to be that same value, but that limit is an absolute max or min for the entire list of values you pulled off to the side, then there is no global max or min for that point. 